If you watch my videos often, then you know, I love LEDs and especially so-called LED cubes. Basically a three-dimensional arrangement of single color or RGB LEDs which can create custom animations or just beautiful color patterns. Now building the main cube is pretty straightforward and not that complicated. But the circuit that controls all of the LEDs and the programming around it can be very confusing and daunting, especially for beginners. So in this two-part video series I will show you how to build a simpler version of a 5x5x5 RGB LED cube. The LED driver circuit only consists of an Arduino Nano, nothing else. And with the help of complementary parts this project is more like a big soldering practice. And through the fast LED library programming is rather simple. But if you're not into coding there already exist a couple of example animations. Which is really cool. Let's get started. The main component of this build are PL9A23 8mm LEDs. Those have an integrated control circuit which means we only need to send a 24-bit data signal to them which consists of the desired color and they do the rest. By daisy chaining the data out to the next data in we can control a lot of them with only one digital pin of the Arduino. And of course for 5x5x5 cube we are going to need 125 of them which all need to be tested beforehand because desoldering a LED inside the cube is a big pain in the ass. But before soldering anything we are going to need a case as a base where we can also hide the few electronic components inside. I came up with a simple box design with a height of only 36mm which I think looks way better than my previous cube with a height of 56mm. The grids of 25 LEDs per layer are spaced to each other with a distance of around 30mm which firstly makes it possible to see even the center LEDs from every angle and secondly determines the outer dimensions to 220 by 220mm. And to mount those LED layers there also need to exist a grid of small 0.8mm holes in the top section. I can use those later on to insert my silvered copper wire which will act as a 3D mesh to secure my LEDs and power them simultaneously. The front has two round holes for the main switch and a potentiometer which I can use later to set the brightness of the LEDs. And the back piece has a rectangular cutout for the DC power jack. Once the plan was done I used Inkscape to create a vector graphic of each case piece which you can also download for reference if you visit my Instructables article about this project. Link is in the description. Afterwards I used a rotary tool to cut out 300 by 300 mm pieces of 3 mm thick acrylic glass. Now I could have made the whole case with such power tools, just like I did my previous case for the 4x4x4 cube. But since I wanted to use my X-Carve for quite a while, I secured my acrylic pieces into place and loaded my SVG files from Inkscape into the easel software. After I did some fine adjustments and changed the material type, I was ready for my first carve. Which turned out terrible. The milling bits went too deep into the material and melted the acrylic glass which immediately wrapped itself around the bits. The solution was to decrease the layer depth and afterwards the milling process was a big success. But again just because you don't have such a machine doesn't mean that you cannot make this case. Once all the pieces were created I used wire cutters to free them from their tap prison and used a bit of rust treatment to make all the outer surfaces smooth and the cutouts for the electrical components a bit bigger. After the test assembly worked out well I used a couple of hot glue drops to create the shape of the case temporarily before I used two component adhesive to glue it all together permanently. And while I was at it I also glued the DC input in its place. Before the case was complete for now I also added four rubber feet on the bottom side. Afterwards I created around 60 pieces of silvered copper wire with a length of 20cm. 
But since this curly wire is not useful for this, I use two pliers and a bit of force to straighten them all out. Then we can finally start the cube construction by inserting 10 copper wires into the holes of the first LED wall. And to make things a bit easier, I also used a bit of hot glue to secure the top section to the main base, so that it wouldn't slide around. To start the soldering process, I firstly bent the pins of 25 LEDs in this manner. Notice that the round side faces left for the first wall. Then I marked the 15.5 cm spots on the first copper string and soldered my LED onto it, so that the underside has a distance of 15.5 cm from the base plate. Afterwards, another LED can be soldered onto the same two copper wires right above the base plate. You need to repeat this process until all the wires of the first wall have their top and bottom LED. And after I used my diagonal cutter to remove the unnecessary axis of the wires and LEDs, I created small 2.5 cm pieces of the silvered copper wire, which I will show you how to use in the next part. Until then, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, stay creative and I will see you next time in a week with part 2. Until then.